When we think about climate change, we tend to think about carbon dioxide and the atmosphere warming the planet. Carbon is so central to our thinking about the climate that many other important aspects are excluded from the conversation. One of these things is water. Water is actually the dominant greenhouse gas, but its global effects are difficult to measure because it doesn't spread out evenly in the atmosphere like carbon does. Its effect on temperature also depends on the many forms it takes. When it takes the form of a haze, it has a warming effect. When it takes the form of clouds, it has a cooling effect, except for at night, in which it has a subtle warming effect. Since atmospheric water is hard to model, it tends to get ignored. But temperature is not the only important aspect of the climate here. If the climate can be warm or cold, the climate can also be wet or dry. The rampant rise of floods and droughts of our time are said to be caused by climate change, but really they are climate change. While temperature does have some effect on rainfall, floods and droughts are primarily caused by disruptions to the hydrological cycle. We tend to think of the water cycle this way. Rain falls, water evaporates, condenses into clouds, and repeats. But this is only part of the picture, since a lot more happens underground. Healthy soil is like a sponge that soaks up a lot of water. Some of it is taken up and stored by plants, and some of it percolates deep down into aquifers. This groundwater wells up and feeds springs and streams, which allows even more life to thrive. There is then much more water to evaporate from the saturated ground or to transpire through plants. This abundance of water vapor allows for more consistent rainfall. So what happens if we cut down the forest, plow the grasslands, and expose the soil? Without trees or plants to buffer the rain, the heavy downpour compacts the soil. The water can't soak down into the compacted ground, so almost all of it stays above ground and we have a flood. Almost all this water runs off, carrying loads of topsoil with it. And when the rain stops, the little water there is left evaporates very quickly, leaving the ground compact and dry. This lack of percolation depletes the groundwater over time, so it can't feed the streams, which dry up. Now there's no water in the land to feed rain clouds, and we have a drought. If a rainstorm does come, it just creates another flood and worsens the subsequent drought. Instead of consistent rainfall, we have a flood drought cycle. Fortunately, it is possible to reverse this trend. There are ways to regenerate ecosystems and restore the water cycle pretty rapidly while feeding people in the process. Making subtle changes to the land's topography can slow the flow of water, allowing more of it to soak into the ground and be used by plants. Plants with deep roots help break up the compacted soil, allowing water to percolate deeper. Everyone has a place in reversing the climate crisis. Whether you're working to protect healthy ecosystems, regenerate damaged ones, or just helping yourself or your neighbor depend a little less on industrial agriculture, you are helping the Earth heal.